this is the P wave on ECG and this is the QRS complex and here is the T wave primary waves seen in the ECG and this region is the PR interval this is the ST segment from here to here that is from beginning of QRS to end of T wave you can take as the QT interval from one P wave to another P wave it is the PP interval I will correct it onset of P wave to onset of P wave that is PP interval and from onset of QRS to onset of next QRS it is RR interval but most often we take it from peak to peak because that's easy to identify P wave is due to atrial depolarization QRS is due to ventricular depolarization and T wave is due to ventricular repolarization then why are both these in the same direction that is because direction of repolarization is opposite to the direction of depolarization that is why both are in the same direction otherwise depolarization wave should have a polarity opposite to that of a repolarization wave now where is atrial repolarization atrial repolarization is not visible in the usual surface ECG but it will correspond to the PR segment part of the QRS and part of the ST segment this upsloping ST depression seen here is supposed to be due to atrial repolarization or TA wave this is supposed to form a parabola like this normally such an ST depression is not significant it is a normal variant now most often we go by the sequence right rhythm then P wave PR segment QRS ST segment and T wave that's the usual sequence in which we analyze the ECG that is in order not to miss any abnormalities then there is something which I missed in the beginning that is this standardization pulse which is not seen well here because it has been clipped off a normal standardization pulse will be a square wave no, not exactly like that because that has become curved I will redraw it approximately because uh, drawing manually with the mouse is not so accurate as the standardization seen on the ECG this is a square wave almost square perfect square is usually seen especially with the modern digital ECGs but it can also be different suppose the edges are smoothed out like this the corners are not seen then it could be a over drum tracing over damp tracing and if there is an overshoot here then it will be under damped so properly damped tracing is one which you would like to interpret and this square wave is corresponding to 10 millimeter to a millivolt and the horizontal plane 
5 large squares or sm uh, 25 small squares will correspond to 1 second. That is because speed of ECG paper is 25 millimeter per second. It's not easy to draw with the mouse making mistakes. Anyway, these are the basic principles. So if you measure the RR interval, this is the RR interval, and divide 1500 that is the if it is 25 millimeter per second 1500 is over a minute so if we divide the rr interval that is we divide 1500 by rr interval you will get the heart rate in beats per minute that's how you calculate the heart rate on ecg Next, you have to know the normal ranges of the PR interval, QRS, etc. PR interval usually is 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds, that is 3 to 5 millimeter. QRS upper limit is taken as 2 and a half divisions, that is 100 millisecond that is because one small division at this speed will correspond to 40 milliseconds so two and a half divisions will be 100 if it is 120 or more you take it as wide QRS a margin has been given so wide QRS is when 120 milliseconds or more then uh, QT interval a simple mnemonic for me is 0 0.43 that is 0 0.34 to 43 that's what I usually remember it as QT interval but uh, mind you it is a variable thing it can change with heart rate it is different from male and female with ages also it is different so you can't have a single value for QT interval heart rate in an adult normal heart rate is taken as from 60 to 100 beats per minute if it is less than 60 it is taken as bradycardia if it is more than 100 it is taken as tachycardia but uh, it is different in children a newborn infant has a normal heart rate of around 140 the heart rate decreases as age increases then heart rate also changes with uh, sleep and uh, activity physical activity when you exercise heart rate physiologically goes up all these have to be taken into consideration while assessing the heart rate and telling whether it is normal or abnormal.